Hey, what's up everybody? It's Joe. I just wanted to jump on and do a quick video on my thoughts on overwintering sizes of colonies and why I am moving away from doing kind of the standard sing, uh, double deep overwintering. A lot of people in northern climates even do triple deep or uh, double deep and a, a medium on top. That has kind of been a standard for quite a few years. People try and overwinter in as large of a colony as possible with as many bees as possible. But I started looking at some studies and it looks like the overwintering success rates are actually higher when the bees winter in smaller clusters and in a smaller cavity size. And when I first was looking into this, I was pretty skeptical about it because I had convinced myself you need as large of a population as possible and as large of a space as possible with as much honey as possible. In the past, I'd overwinter with um, 100, 120 pounds of honey. And I typically did two deeps and a medium. I think sometimes two deeps and two mediums. But now that I'm kind of moving into being a sideliner and I'm, I'm doing this as kind of a, a side business, I really want to look at what is the best way of wintering and what first got me onto it was Ian Shepler, the Canadian beekeeper. He was overwintering everything in single deeps. Now he was over, he does overwinter in a shed, but in his video, he said that before he did the shed, he was still overwintering like that. And there's people in his area that over went to a single deeps and they don't do it indoors. Um, so I started looking into it more and there's a variety of videos on YouTube with this whole concept of single deep management. And it just kind of intrigued me. It, it sounds like a, a very sensible solution and it seems a lot easier. And I really wanted to see though what the percentages are. And I looked at a variety of different studies that people have done, nothing on a huge scale, but one of them that I looked at, I'm looking at it here. It's from uh, Megan Milbreth from uh, Michigan. So I wanted to find people in Michigan that were doing it. And she is one of them that uh, she put a whole white paper together on it. And she says here, I'm looking at her white paper, and I'll put a link in, in the YouTube video description so you can look it up for yourself. But it says, in the winter of 2015 and 16, I compared multiple equipment styles. I overwintered 86 colonies in five different styles of equipment. Full-size hives, she had eight of those. Single 10-frame deep boxes, 15 of those. Uh, double side-by-side -side deep boxes, uh, 12 of those, and then uh, four-frame towers. So I think four-frame nukes, two four-frame nuke boxes stacked on top of each other, uh, 38 of those, and 10 styrofoam five-frame nuke boxes. So all they were was five frames in the styrofoam ones. And then she says the nukes were started at the end of July through the beginning of August with most being made the first week of August. They were made with five frames of bees, two or three frames of brood, and had queen cells. So the double deeps that I mentioned above, she describes as a system that uh, was championed by Michael Palmer. They had, uh, these had two colonies in the same volume as a double deep hive. The bottom deep was divided, each with a four frame nuke above it. Um, so kind of an interesting system there. Full hives are the, the traditional wintering methodology. And single deep, the five frame nuke was put into a 10 frame equipment. The edges filled with foundation or drawn comb. Um, and then the styrofoam nukes. So in year one, she had better survival with her nukes than the full size colonies with the old queens. The greatest survival was the single deep hives, 87% survival, followed closely by the styrofoam nukes. Styrofoam nukes in Michigan with just five frames, 82% survival rate. The double deeps, 
four frame tower and full size hives had similar rates of 67, 68, and 63. The worst survival rate was the full size hives. The four frame towers was 68%, which is interesting. I unfortunately this winter, uh, man, that kind of makes me think because I have eight double stack nuke hives now that I'm planning on overwintering. And it looks like from her study, for some reason, the double stack didn't do as well as the single deeps. Um, of course, her sample size with the single deeps was lower. Let's see what the sample size was. Um, single deep 10 frame deep boxes 15. So actually, that was a, a decent number. Uh, the four frame towers, she had 38 of the four frame towers. Now, those were started pretty late, and she let the queens, uh, she let them raise their own queens. The ones that I have, I have five frame towers, so they end up being 10 frames. It ends up being the same space as a single deep, except they're tall, not wide. Um, and my theory was it would be better to keep them in the tall space so they can start to cluster at the bottom and move up. But a lot of people have great results with the single deep wintering. Um, I have found other studies from different areas where they have pretty similar results with the single deep. And it just, it makes so much sense to me. I had, I saw one YouTuber explain it. He said he originally got the idea, he was out in Utah. And before he became a beekeeper, he had a swarm that moved into, um, it was like a, I think some kind of pot. And he had it there, I think it was five years. It survived all the winters with no problem. And he calculated the space in that uh, container and it was the same as a single deep hive. So he started when he got into beekeeping, he actually got into beekeeping after that sometime. But he started overwintering in the single deep hives because of that. And if you look at uh, Thomas Seeley's books, he calculates the space from a wild colony. And the wild colony space is about a single deep hive. And the wild colonies somehow make it over the winter. And, what, and so it just, it just makes a lot of sense that what we're doing, forcing bees to be in two deeps or three deeps, it's two or three times what they typically use in the wild to survive. So it makes sense to try and replicate their natural uh, behavior. If you think about it, the bees have less space to heat. They also are forced to store all of their food in a much more condensed area. So they still have, you can still give them 90 pounds of food for the winter in a single deep. You just have to let them raise their brood. And then as the brood is hatching, let them backfill all of that brood area with honey. And then that whole super becomes really jam packed full of honey. You still want a little bit of space left for the winter uh, brood nest area, but you don't really want the queen raising a lot of brood too early because then they use up a lot of their stores. So that's kind of the whole concept with the single deep is replicating what they do in their own natural uh, environment. And they, the numbers just tell the story. They have a better success rate. So what I'm, I'm doing is I'll be wintering uh, some with the five uh, double stacked nuke boxes. I won't be doing any five frame nukes. I was I was really tempted to, but I got uh, got kind of concerned about that. But just looking at this at the results, the styrofoam nuke boxes, and that, and that's one of the things. I don't have styrofoam nuke boxes right now. I just have the wooden ones, but. I think next year I may get a bunch of styrofoam nuke boxes and overwinter them that way. The numbers tell the story. So 
I'm going to winter quite a few of them with a single deep and a medium. And part of that is I've been feeding them and, and I have all these mediums full of sugar and I don't want to waste them. They were storing the sugar and part of it is probably honey, but part of it's probably sugar. So I don't want to extract it because I think there's probably some sugar in there. So I want them to use that for their winter stores, but it's in medium boxes and some of my hives are deep. So um, we'll see. I think there's two of them I may winter as a single deep and two mediums. And again, part of it is I don't want to feed them because they have enough in the two mediums um, plus what's in the deep to survive the winter. So I don't really want to feed them if I don't have to. So we'll see. And it would also be good for me just to kind of experiment on my own to see, you know, do those two survive? And are they healthier in the spring? Do they get a better um, start on the year? So that's also an important thing because if you overwinter a five frame nuke and they make it to spring, but the population is so decimated that they can't, they can't uh, expand quickly in the spring, and that's going to be something to um, worry about as well. And another benefit of wintering in smaller clusters is if you have strong hives in, say, July, and you want to increase your winter success rate as much as possible, say you have 10 hives and you lose uh, 30 or 40 percent of them due to winter losses what you can do is split those hives you can just split them all into single deep so then you have 20 hives in beginning of August or something like that and then you overwinter all those 20 if you have a 30 percent loss on the 20 in the spring you have 14 hives left with the other method you would have seven hives left and, and those populations in the spring, if they're fed properly and they start raising brood early enough, they can expand pretty quickly and become full-size colonies um, and catch up pretty quickly to what uh, a full-size a, a full winter colony would be. So I'd encourage you to click the link in the video description. She has a lot of, a bunch of other good information on survival rates and she has comments on the styrofoam nukes and double deeps and all the different setups that she used for that for those 86 hives and she talks about what she would do different versus that year so those are my thoughts let me know what you think in the comments below please subscribe to my channel i'm trying to grow my channel and uh, please hit the like button so you know you've watched this video and you don't have to watch it again that helps you keep track of what videos you've watched it also helps the video rank higher in uh, Google's algorithms when people are searching for a video in YouTube. YouTube puts it together in their algorithm and uh, they use the like as one of the factors in ranking a video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.